you have made it here to the end. You believe there was only ten such fools. There is always more horrors in the dark. I will now tell you about a creature so foul, so cruel, so depraved it would chill your very so- You can't see me at all, can you? What I get for trying to make freaking atmosphere. This is Halloween, this is Halloween, 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 Halloween. Where was I? Ah, yes. I was going to tell you about a creature, so. You know what's great? The atmosphere's gone. I'm just not in the mood. Hey, everybody, it's Hawk here, and I am in the lair of eternal evil, or. That's what I was going for. Um. Uh, Today is Halloween, and I miscounted. <laughs> I thought date 10 would be on Halloween, but um, I'm an idiot. So <laughs> you're getting a bonus video today. What is today's video about on this All Hallows of Eve? It's about mean locks. Now, the hell's a mean lock, you're probably wondering. Well, it's an excellent question. Now, a mean lock doesn't exist outside of D&D. It is a sole D&D creation. And I'm gonna stand up, because it's starting to look a little weird in this shot otherwise. Whoop. Huh, there we go, that's much better. How it's supposed to be. That chair's not terribly comfortable anyway. Alright, so what the hell's a mean lock? Alright, mean locks are aberrations um, in Monster Manual 2, I believe. Uh, so they're from 3.0. They have a really cool little... Um, we we'll call it a full-on module in Dungeon and Dragon Magazine. Don't ask me the number; I don't remember. But it's called Escape from Meanlock Prison, and it's apparently really good. I haven't gotten to run it yet, but I have read through it. It looks really neat. So basically, meanlocks are about three and a half to four feet tall. They hunch over like this. They've got this really screwed up looking face. None of them really have consistent facial features, other than they have really deformed heads that look sort of insectoid, vaguely. I don't really know how else to describe it. Uh, they've got claws, little, little pincer things. Uh, on top of the little pincer things they have, they've got the nice little shell. So they're sort of crustacean-y looking. They're all hunched over and nasty looking and, and just generally unpleasant beings. But Hawk, you say you just described a weird looking goblin with claws. I did, until you realize that they have a, as a free action in D&D, uh, they can just create a 30-foot fear radius around themselves, where if you fail, uh, you go catatonic from fear. You don't go to, sh do not go to shaken, do not go to frightened, do not collect $200. You go to catatonic, on the ball, hugging, in, on the ground, in a ball, hugging your knees, going, ah! That's bad enough, okay, that, that's a save or suck. That basically might as well be save or die. This gets worse. Their claws have paralytic venom? I don't know. Paralytic toxin in them. So while the claws do pff, laughable damage, seriously, it's, it's, it's laughable. It's like a D3 or D2 minus 2. It's garbage damage. That's not what they're doing for. They're doing it to pinch you and then make you fall over because you've seized up and now you're paralyzed. Oh, I haven't gotten to the more fun bits. Rend mind. Yeah, okay, so if you think them being able to produce a fear aura that makes you go catatonic, don't worry, if you pass that once, you can't get hit by it again for 24 hours, apparently. It's just, you know, your system's now, uh, inoculated to it temporarily. Rend Mind, however, is wisdom damage. They, they send all sorts of horrible mental phantasms at you, and it just sucks in general. Causing wisdom damage to you, it's basically they make you go a little crazy. It, it's not good. Now, making all of this worse, because, yeah, we need to make that worse, they have a Dimension Door ability. It's significantly shorter range, only 60 feet, and they can only bring themselves with it, but that doesn't matter, so you can't stick the suckers down. Because when you're going, you know, the great and powerful wizard is going to go and annihilate all of them while well, they do their thing, and then, boop, they're gone. So, one. You know, they come in, the combat starts, goes before you, it tries to hit you with its mental powers, nothing happens. And I'm going to go blow it up, because it's my turn next, and then they, boop, they're gone. It's gone. Poof. 60 feet away. Out of my line of sight, probably. Yeah, that's going to get annoying. Oh, I forgot. Even more fun. They can coordinate, because they're telepathic. 
traffic. They can talk to each other, and you, if they really feel like it. But they don't really feel like it. Yeah, so that sounds like a just bundle of laughs, doesn't it? I mean, by the time you're running into them, yeah, you can probably beat them unconscious. Their AC's not all that great. They've got 18 HP. It's all some straight hit die. They're not terribly durable. It's the fact that they'll generally show up in lots of groups. They're stealthy little suckers, and they're going to hit you with all sorts of debuffs before they get into combat with you. Because their goal is not actually to kill you, good sirs. No, 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 good sirs and madams. They don't wish to kill you. Oh, no, no, oh, nay, nay, nay. They want to grab you and drag you into the depths so they can stick you in a hole and then mentally torture you to turn you into a mean lock. Yep. Every mean lock you see, every one of them was a person like you. Or maybe they were an orc, so they're not like you. Or a hobgoblin, again, not like you. Unless I have orcs and hobgoblins watching, then they are like you. Mean locks suck. They're annoying as hell. They're sneaky, they're devious, they're vicious, they're awful. Awful, awful, awful on every possible way. But they're so much fun to run as the DM. <laughs> That's all there is to say. They are so much fun if you're the DM, because it's just endless harassment. They don't engage. They don't want to engage. They don't want to get involved into a protracted fight. That's not their goal. They're not Tucker's Kobolds. They're not Tucker's Goblins. So uh, those of you that know what that is, that's basically uh, take Kobolds and Goblins and then run them like the Viet Cong. They're not that, where their intent is to kill you or drive you off. No, no. The Mean Locks want to capture you. This is how they procreate. This is horrifying, frankly. I don't care who you are. This goes beyond someone violating your bodily autonomy in, in multiple ways to reproduce. This is them taking you and going beyond brainwashing. They take you, they destroy who you were, mentally speaking. They then, apparently, this mutation then causes you to warp and twist into a horrible mean lock, and then you just become another one. No memory of what you were before. No way, really, to undo it, honestly. So they t turning you into a mean lock is horrible. Because the only way to undo it, after it's done, is wish your miracle. Have fun getting your hands on those. Now, I'm going to go through the procedure of how this happens. So, we, me, uh, the Black Wizard Hawk, uh, am with Swordy McSword Guy, Backstabby McGee, and Pius McPreachy, in the standard D&D party, are going through a entirely normal dungeon. Uh, we're actually going to go get some bandits, because bandits are holed up inside of an old fort, and they've just been making a nuisance of themselves, so we're getting paid to go in there, and I'm going to just nuke them from orbit. Alright, so, I'm standing in the back of the group, doing my great wizard stuff by making everything explode. By the way, I don't play wizards usually, I play sorcerers, but most people default to wizard. Nuking everything because I don't want to be optimized. <clears throat> and having a grand old time, and then suddenly a mean lock comes out and blasts me with fear, and I freak, I suddenly start shrieking, and then I fall to the ground. I'm not going to do that now. I don't have nice floors. Now, my party may or may not hear me. Let's hope one of them does. If they do not, what will happen is the mean lock will now grab me, forcing me to make saves against the paralysis, which doesn't last terribly long, but frankly, they doesn't need to. And then they'll drag me off down the hole they came out of. Now, this hole is big enough for them to fit comfortably in. However, me, I would have to crawl on my hands and knees because it's only going to be about three, maybe four feet about best. I am six foot. That tunnel is going to be about here-ish. I have to do that. Have fun with that, okay? Have fun dealing with that crap. So they're gonna take me, drag me down into their maze-like tunnel, probably occasionally paralyzing me, possibly just constantly rending my mind so my wisdom sc uh, score falls to zero and I fall into a coma. See, because then I'm entirely manageable, because they just keep hitting me with that. Now, after I have been a rent catatonic, they will then, then multiple uh, mean locks will join hands and all touch me. Bad touch. Very, this is very bad touch. This is very, very bad touch. Now, after 1d6 hours of this, yes, it's randomized, it depends, 
all of my ability scores fall to one, unless they're already at zero. <clears throat> so I am now catatonic in every single way. I am paralyzed. I can't pick my own body up because of that, so I'm a drooling mess. It's great, right? Now, continuing on this, 1D... Now, at this point, I should say, at this point, if someone were to come and save me, it takes a heal or a greater restoration, and I'm good to go. I'm back and ready for action for my fiery vengeance. Now, up until this point, I could have theoretically gotten out, but again, this goes back to the whole tunnels are really small things, so you good luck getting out of that. That's not easy. Now, if you're a small character, you're actually in luck, because welcome to the jungle. You you got this one. You you don't have to crouch, you don't have to crawl around, you can fight your way out of this one straight, just that's a lot of mean locks to go through, so bad, bad odds. Now, if I am not saved, 1d6 hours after all my ability scores fall to zero, or one, I should say, I become a mean lock only reversible by the aforementioned wish and or miracle. Meaning I'm screwed. Because if I'm in a place where I'm fighting mean locks, I am not important enough. Probably. Most likely. Therefore, I, the Black Wizard Hawk, would have turned into a horrible mean lock unless Sorty McSword guy, um, Stabby Mc... I don't even remember the name of the rogue because no one cares, and Pi... and, uh, Preachy McPious, unless they save me, I'm screwed. Now, the upside is, they probably will, because me shrieking at the top of my lungs as I fall catatonic to the ground in a fetal position screaming for my mother, probably gonna get their attention. Probably. So they should be able to come over there, beat the crap out of them, and in 1d4 plus 4 rounds, because that's how long that lasts. Yes, that actually lasts for quite some time in D&D. Uh, by the way, that's about 30 seconds minimum. That's a 30 second stun. Now. How do you deal with mean locks? That is what you all want to know. I will tell you, nuke them from orbit. I'm only being slightly facetious. Mean locks are a blight upon the material plane. They are a blight upon every universe they exist in. They are horrible, they are devious, they hate absolutely everything that's not a mean lock, and if they can turn it into a mean lock, they will do so. They're awful. Now, if you were to find a tunnel, you, you have access to this mean lock tunnel. What should you do? Not go in it. <laughs> do not go in there. As, as horrible and callous as it's going to sound, you're going to go, well, but there's people we can save. How long has it been? Has it been over an hour? They're a mean lock. Just assume that. Okay, because unless you have access to greater restoration or heal, that's the only way you're going to be able to fix these people. Now, do you have easy access to that? Can you undo that? If the answer is no, it's going to be too late. Because even if you pull them out, you have 1d6 hours to save them. Possibly less. You have to remember, you don't know how long they've been down there, and you don't know how long they've been rendered in that state. Now, if you get them before this, congratulations, you can save them. Because that hasn't happened yet. However, I wouldn't want to go into a mean lock lair. It is set up specifically for them. I am too big. I can't be doing this. My solution is... Dump a bunch of water down the, down the pipe. Correct. You and whoever, you basically get your priest, get your magic users together, and then just make a whole bunch of water. My group plays with infinite cantrips because cantrips are pretty weak. If your group doesn't, well, you can find another way to do this. But flood the tunnel. It's a wonderful solution to the problem. They can't breathe underwater, so they'll drown. Will you kill some of the people in there? Uh, some of the prisoners? Possibly, but those prisoners are, in all likelihood, mean locks already. Yes, this sounds absolutely horrible. Yes, you don't like this. Yes, the paladin is going to give you really bad looks because you just drowned out an entire tunnel that may or may not have prisoners that may or may not have been turned into mean locks already, and therefore may or may not be beyond saving. You, however, just saved your own life and the lives of a whole lot of other people. Congratulations to you. Now, if you have to go in there, and I may just beat you with the stick of wisdom if you do this, but if you insist that you absolutely positively need to go into a mean lock lair, you bring every AoE spell you got your hands on. You make sure you are equipped to fight in a tunnel. This means you don't bring a spear. This is the one time I'm actually going to say that. You do not bring a spear. You will be crouched like this. 
you will bring a large shield to stick in front of you. Your uh, Swordy McSword guy will have a Gladius or other small weapon. Therefore, he can actually maneuver around a light weapon, preferably. Gladiuses are perfect. Daggers also work wonderfully. That's the whole point. Short reach. It favors them, but you're okay. Stick the shield in front of him, and he'll stab around. Remember, you have terrible maneuverability in this place. It's not set up for you. It's set up for them. Now, if your thief or rogue, or whatever that class uh, person is playing in that particular one, happens to be a small character, and they very well might be, they will be hunky-dory in there. They will be your best friend, because they are not inhibited, unlike us medium schmucks. We are. Now, beyond that, beyond making sure everyone's got weapons that are usable in here, meaning everyone has a light weapon, so I don't have a dagger on me, I just failed. Uh, I need a knife, or a hatchet, preferably a knife. The stick... Uh, I could probably bring it in, but it's going to be a limited usage unless this thing spews out fire out the end of it. And it probably does. So, fire. Fire's nice. Lightning's nice. Anything that's in a nice big cone, or lines, honestly, the tunnels are pretty lit narrow. So, lightning bolt's fine. Burning hands is fine. Cone of cold is a crappy spell, but if it wasn't, it would be perfect. Fireball works. Really, AoEs in general. AoE debuffs work wonderfully too. Glitter Dust is a fantastic spell. I can I can highly recommend, especially with Shape Spell. Turn it into a giant cone and make everything blind! And then let your party go at it. But as I said, if you can avoid ever going into a mean lock lair, do so. Don't go into a mean lock lair. Going into a mean lock lair sucks. You don't want to do this. If you can collapse it, collapse it. If you can drown it, drown it. If you could redirect an active volcano into it, do it. They're horrible, they suck, and all it takes is you to roll one crappy save, and you are probably screwed. This has been a public service announcement by Hoctacus. GMs, roll responsibly. <clears throat> Joking aside, mean locks are probably the embodiment of some of the most underappreciated but yet nastiest creatures in D&D. Particularly because they can accidentally kill an entire party if the party rolls like garbage. Now, if your party happens to be immune to mind-affecting effects, well, there you go. Got an undead in the party? Oh, everything just got way nicer because they're immune. They'll be okay. Everyone else? Nope. Nope. You're not. So be careful out there, buddy. Make sure you have ways to remove debuffs. Make sure you have um, various ways to fight in enclosed spaces. That being said, hope you all enjoyed this. I enjoyed making the series, so I hope you all did too. Now, it's Halloween, so I want you all to do one thing. Have fun and do it responsibly. So that's two things. But, this is Octokiss. Remember to like, share, subscribe, ring the notification bell, because YouTube is being weird as always. And I will see you all later. Peace out.